message from God to you. If God thinks it's okay for me, then it's okay for me. I'm going to use God's report. Hallelujah. He says I'm a star and that's what I am. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? You are about to listen to a transformational message by Apostle Aki David of Light Givers Ministries International. Stay tuned and be blessed. We set the pace for a greater uh-huh. It is big English. NLT. You read NLT yourselves. Want to go? Let's pause. He said there's not even a single person eh, on this earth who is always good. It's a good Monday to Sunday. Stop beating yourself about yesterday's sin. It doesn't matter. Receive forgiveness. Accept what Jesus has done. Are you hearing me? Yes. Not a single person on earth is always good. And never sins. He's telling you that we, we, the, on this earth that we are on, eh, or did he say that another place? Is it? Is gone on yet? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that analysis. That is so. He's trying to let you know that there is nobody, and there will be nobody who will never sin. No one never sins. Everybody sins. That's why Jesus came to pay, so that you are free. <laughs> Let's go to God's word. God's word. This is why we'll be patient with their mistakes. Yeah. When they make mistakes, you can let it go. Why can you let it go? Certainly, there is no one so righteous on earth that he always does what is good and never sins. He uses the terminology, certainly, for sure, for certain. Are you learning something? Let me give more evidence. First John chapter 1 verse 8. Am I, am I going too fast? You are, you are catching. Good. First John 1 verse 8. If we say that we have no sins, so it's trying to let you know that, bro. Uh-huh. There's no one who never sins. We all sin. So you are born again righteous. So the material that has come is not the former you. But everybody else is a sinner. Now the you that is here is an heir. It is Christ who lives in you. Not you in you. Do you get now? So that is the meaning of born again. The born again is born with another life. Not born with his mother's life. Not born with the Adamic life. He's born after the second and the last Adam. Born after Christ. That's why we work miracles. That's why we pray for the sick and they should be healed. That's why we cast out devils. Now that you want to cast out devils, you are afraid that you... you, you um, 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 I said things I shouldn't say. So when I cast out devils, they may not go. You are the only one limiting yourself. When the demons see that you don't understand what you are doing, you don't have results. When we show up to pray, Jesus is praying. Yeah. There will be results. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Next verse. I taught you this the other time. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is some. I told you the word confess there doesn't mean to say, it means to acknowledge. It means on the way. You, you can't be walking in Christ and you don't know what mistakes are. But the problem with us is that when we know what it is, we don't let it go. He said, acknowledge, know your sin. Then know that he is faithful. Not on his faithfulness. Faithfulness means he's there all the time. It will happen all the time for you. And he is just, justice, justified to forgive our sins. Then he will clean you from all, not some. From all, not some. The sin against the Holy Spirit is not accepting Christ. Is that not it? I've done the analysis for you before. He said that's the only sin that will not be forgiven. Jesus was talking to a group of people who would not accept him. And that's a sin against the Holy Spirit. So it means there's no sin with us. I'm righteous. I'm righteous. Every, day. Every day. I'm free from sin. I'm free from sin. Yes. The devil doesn't like it when he says that things. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. That's the next response. Let's go to Romans chapter 7 verse 15. There was a day Paul was trying to do an analysis of uh, sin. I'm already giving more evidence that uh, your own righteousness will not make it. So let's look at what Paul said. Paul, Apostle Paul, you're not the only one who got feelings for girls. You're not the only one who got it. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. 
but what I hate, that I that do I. I know if you didn't understand anything, you understood, but what I hate, that do I. So let's go to CSB. I'll read into 18. For I do not understand what I am doing. He's in a dilemma. He's in a dilemma. Because I do not practice what I want to do. But I do what I hate. Next verse. He's talking about his life before his freedom in Christ. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, I agree with the law that it is good. The law is good. But the law, when I look at it, I don't do it. I'm not doing what I shouldn't be doing. He said, this is what is happening. Reverend Apostle Paul, the one God used so. He's talking to us about his life. This is personal life. Hmm. Next verse. So now, I'm no longer the one doing it. He's saying there's a reason why sin is there. But it is sin living in me. That's why now Jesus is the one living in you. Next verse. Verse 18. For I know that nothing good lives in me. That is in my flesh. He's talking about his flesh. In this flesh, there's nothing good inside it. Atinka and kasa. Atinka. Watinka was wrong. Onya? Touch and go. Touch and go. Jesus. Pastor, a pastor has four children. How? Atinka. A pastor has four children. It is Atinka. When he's, preach, he's praying, he prays to his mission. Somebody in the, eh? Kula Valley or eh? But four children. These are four children birthed from Atinka. If we don't rise, there will be no children. There's always an ascension. My goodness, people of God. Ha! So when we find this Griffey boy is cursing their manhood. That it's not time to marry. One day somebody told the lady he was in a relationship with, you are 25, you want to marry next year. He stopped the whole relationship because he said when he sees the lady, he has feelings. Because of that. Hey, not that they've seen, no. So, hey! That's how the thing ended. The lady came to see me and said, the guy is a pastor. He was in training for pastoral ministry. You are marrying the next year. But he stopped the whole relationship. He said, you when he's finished and they put his clerk on, then you will marry. Because right now the lady, just looking at her, then there's, when they call uh, the, the, on phone, there are guys who are telling their thing, die in the name of Jesus. <laughs> die in the name of Jesus. I hope you have resurrection power. <laughs> when, the, when we approach Christ the wrong way, there is a thing, it exists. He said, it is in my flesh. For the desire to do what is good is with me. But there's no ability to do it. Christ is now your ability. I'm only trying to explain to you that this is what was there. The reason for sin. In fact, let me show you where, why we can call something sin. Because at first, there was nothing called sin. So let me show you. First Corinthians 15 verse 58. 55. Let's go to 55 first to put it in context. I hope you're learning. When you make mistakes, receive forgiveness. Don't mind what somebody said. I've read the scriptures to you. It is clear. It's written. It is written. Oh, death! Where is there? There is sting. You know sting? Sting is um, beast sting. Alright? Oh, death! Where is thy sting? Oh, grave! Where is thy victory? Next verse. The sting of death is sin. Uh-huh. And the strength of sin is the law. This is Bigo. He's saying that the law came so that we we'll know what sin is. We we'll know that we are sinners and then we need Jesus. Without the law, we will say we are fine. We don't need Jesus. This is, is, is it not here? <laughs> that thing was called till the law came. When Cain killed Abel. God. Oh, are you not here? God protected him. God put a mark on him. He said, nobody should touch him. He could talk to God. God could talk back to him. In Old Testament, too. He spoke. God talked to me. He hear God's voice. You, 
You say because yesterday your boyfriend, you were just, you went to visit him, he was escorting you. Then when he hugged you, you know, it was not the hug where you stand like this. So when he hugged you, his body touched a particular part of your body. So since then, you are not fine. You say that you have come to your room, you have locked the door, you have put the corn, you are lifting us, you have sung worship for hours. Now you are telling your father, Father, talk to me. Don't go far from me. I want to hear your voice. Oh, free Jai. 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 Why? Mistake now, but we're not here. Assassin or barbeton, and yes, she. Are we? We are in a world full of sin. Sin will meet us. The strength of sin is in the is is the law. The strength of sin is the law. Next verse. But thanks, ah, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see, people, you pray with this about demons. But it was about sin. We have victory over sin. That's what he's saying. I'm victorious over sin. But thanks be to God, we give it us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Bible. This is the Bible. Next verse. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Do you know what I'm trying to tell you? Don't let anybody lie to you again. Be free in your mind once and for all. He said be steadfast. Unmovable. This is why we work for the Lord. I, was I not telling you? Yes. Always abounding. Feel free to work. Feel free to do ministry. Feel free to preach the gospel. Don't say that me, I have seen in my life, so I don't know who to preach to. Now that you're going to preach to somebody, say, brother, you know, self-condemnation. You feel too sinful to preach to someone. You feel too sinful to lift your hands in worship in church. You feel too sinful to preach the gospel. That's what you're talking about, though. Does it not happen to people? Oh, please, it has happened to me before. Because just because I said something, you lift your hands in church. By the time you sing the worship song, the devil says, Hey, is it you? <laughs> Some ladies have gone to hell things that they shouldn't hold. Hey, anchors. You know, a whole ship can be. <clears throat> They've held it, but in the morning, the hands are up. You are doing worship. Now the devil is speaking. Hey, hey. The Bible says it's the accuser of the brethren. I don't have time to read some scriptures to you. You'll be shocked that everything, these things are in the Bible. God said, uh, when you read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm not, don't open it. I will leave there and we'll not close. It's, I'm too much in love with the scripture. He said, Christ was in the world, not imputing our sins. Christ doesn't accuse us. Hey, I said, if we are in the prophecy, you are being accused. And it was not because of a lifestyle they were teaching, oh, God wants you here or there. But it's, about, it's not of God. He said, Christ, the true, true spirit of Christ. That's why most of our prophecy services, you don't hear things like, oh, uh, you are sleeping. Those kind of prophecies are about. Let me give you an example of good prophecies. Let's say somebody is sleeping around. God would have given the prophecy. You would have heard things like, Brother Paul or Brother John. God is calling you to a higher level of holiness. That's how God will, he will talk about the future. I said, that's how prophecies work. I've taught you some things here. I prophesy here. Not that God comes say, Hey! What's that? Me ma? My bonny woman him. My bonny woman him. me back. It's not Christ. Already, take it like this. Jesus is not talking. I'm telling you, I said, it's not Jesus. You can pack your bag and go. It's not Jesus. He said, not imputing their sins. He's always looking at the next level to go with you. I can show you places in the Bible where people were making mistakes. Jesus came and he didn't even mention it. Yes, said, let's move. Ah. This is serious. Always abounding. Always. Don't let anything restrict you. Don't let anything restrict you. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, our work is not in vain. Amen. Think that I'm working for God. And in my work for God, I may make some mistakes, so I'm going to hell. He's saying your work is not in vain. You will go. Oh, are you hearing? Yes. We've, had, we've had too many fears. Usually, I even notice in the ministry. You notice people work for God out of fear. Wrong. When you grow, it's out of love. I'm abounding. 
Uh, you see, I've been, we've been able to separate it for you. Your Christianity, Christ that you have accepted is taking you to heaven. But we are going to a new world and there will be reward ceremony. And the reward is from the works. He said, now feel free to do the work because it is not in vain. Listen, if I did all the work, if I do all the work, that will give me reward. But because of sin, I'm not going to heaven. Because if we are going to heaven, no reward. Then my work is in vain. He's telling you that, don't think that the work will be in vain because you are saved. Nothing can change it. Heaven is assured. So he said, now work boldly. Be steadfast. Don't let anything move you. Always abounding. Because your labor is not in vain in the Lord. If you did it, he says it's not going to be in vain. He knows how to pay. So feel free. That's what he's telling you. Do the work. Cornelius was doing the work, but he has not accepted Christ. Send men to Simon Peter, who will bring you words by which you'll be saved. So that now I'll count it. You have fulfilled the Peter part. And you are working. You are afraid. I was please, how is my works in heaven? You are sick. <laughs> ah. For as much as you know, I know. For as much as you know, I know. I know my work is not in vain. Some people don't know. That's why they are doubting. Today they, they know. Tomorrow they don't know. Me, I know. I know. Yeah. Knowledge. I am aware that my work is not in vain. All the things I'm doing for Jesus is not in vain. He's faithful. Are we here? Yeah, yeah, you must know. Let's read it in NCV. You will love it. I hope you are learning. I'll spend only really less of your time now. Ha. NCV. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your pain? Uh, please go to 54 for me. I want to put it in context. 54. So this body that can be destroyed will clothe itself with that which can never be destroyed. It's talking about when we go. We'll get new bodies. And this body that dies, this one it dies. This body that dies will clothe itself with that which can never die. We are going to wear new bodies one day. So he's talking about a place. When this happens, this scripture will be made true. There's a scripture. The scripture says, death is destroyed forever in victory. It's because of us. Next verse. That's why he said, death. Yeah. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your pain? That's why he mentioned that to us. So he said, when we go, death will be nothing. Next verse. Death's power to hurt is sin. And the power of sin is the law. The law is what is giving sin power. I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. Sin shall not have dominion over me. These are all scriptures. Now, next verse. Next verse. But we thank God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. So my dear brothers and sisters, stand strong. He said, this is why. There's, so means we are coming from a place. When you are assured of your salvation, he says, stand strong. Don't let any other preaching make you feel you will not go. So that you add to your works. Don't let anything get you going back, vacillating. No, 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 no. Do not let anything move you. Always give yourselves fully. Fully. Do you see why we work? I think I've been saying that tonight. This is why we do it all. Always give yourselves fully. Not some part of your life. Fully. You. Other gods are sending their people to go and die. Your God died for you. Eh. They send them. Four people have come for you. Today I was watching something with uh, the King Willie there. And three people went for power and two, two lived and the last one died. They said the last person will be sacrificed. And the person has to die for the two to get their audacious power. Now, what is this? That is it. Their God kills. Our own died for us. Yeah. And for us, we never die. We only leave this body to another body and we are there with him forever. Yeah. Is that not it? Yes. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know, you are aware, you know, you know, you know that your work in the Lord is never wasted. He pays. 
When you work for him, he pays. He said he'll pay you on earth a hundredfold. He said you lose family. You lose friends. You may not be able to visit people. You lose family. You lose friends. You lose, you lose some money. You lose many things. But all these things you are losing. He said on this earth in poor, Jesus said a hundredfold times. Hundred of everything you lose. Time you spend working for him. Hundredfold. It, oh, should we read it? There we are. Look at me. Hundredfold. Then he said in heaven, eternal life. So he pays you two ways. So he said, enjoy the work. Do it. Give yourself fully. Let others hear the message. Work hard in the house of God. Invest your time. You are not at a loss. I'm in mean this place. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4. <laughs> this is the only thing that will cleanse us. So I'm just giving you a scripture to that effect. I'm almost done. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. It's not possible. At first, they were using the blood of bulls. They were using the blood of goats. Jesus is our only cleanser. He are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. Even as we are preaching tonight, your sins are gone. Amen. Yes. Because the, the, in the word of God is liberty. The word that has come frees your mind, frees your soul. That's why you are free. I, I, can I go a step further? Or should we have a part two? Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 4. NIV. Please, the brothers at the back, help me quickly. Eh? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. What is this? He's saying that you have been chosen so that every day you'll be holy. Every day you'll be blameless. And now we've proven to you in this service from scriptures that nobody can be holy on his own. You see why salvation is here? So our holiness is because of Christ. Christ is my righteousness. When I see your face, you are not happy about sadness. I don't know what you are looking for. I don't know what you are looking for. This is why you should be sure that when you pray, nothing is limiting your, sin, your prayer. Like I prayed, so I've been making some mistakes. Of late, things are happening, so the prayer, I can't have answers. Hey! Bah! Stop your sickness. If you have a thermometer at home, check your temperature. Something's wrong. For he chose us in him. Some people... By the time they are doing something, the thing is not working. Now. The, the first question they ask themselves is, Satan is the accuser of the bread. Some of you have been working for him. He has not paid you. You should go for your salary. Yes, you have been accusing yourself to yourself. You take yourself to court where the judge, jury, eh, prosecutor is yourself. You can be sitting down worried. Hey, me, I did this and that. That's why things are not moving. That shouldn't be so. Be strong in the grace. Amen. When you get to a place and things are not working, it's because you must put on more grace. The level of grace you have put there is less. So the first thought that should come to you is that I'm receiving more grace to the, to the new level. But anytime the devil gets you to be thinking, I'm sinning, I'm doing something that's not well, that is where you will be and things will never shake. It says, Approaching the throne of grace. Is that not it? Ah. It's a throne of grace. We are before grace. Grace is what we use to do things. Mountains will bow. Do you understand? I say mountains will break down. They will bow. You know, the time I sent a message, I said we are rivers. Yeah, we are rivers. When we come and we are, uh, there's a mountain on the path, we will split into two and we will join at the back. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Now that sin is out of the way, what can stop you? Nothing. Now when you pray, trust, because if you don't have faith in your prayer, it doesn't work. If you don't have faith in what you are doing, it doesn't work. If you don't have faith in anything. When it is tried by fire one day, it will not work. Hmm. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world. Before the creation, ton, you were chosen. It was in his plan. You are holy and blameless today. In his sight. In love. Now let's, let's, let's continue. In love... He predestined us. Predestination means be pre is before. Because of the love, we have been predestined, predestined to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. Now, you are ladies who are saying, uh, Am I a son? In Christ, there's no daughter, only sons. One day I'll explain. So it means the woman is a son, the guy is a son. Angels, don't are not male and female. 
his image is not male and female. Huh? So there's only one <laughs> gender, and we are all in that gender. That is why we are kings and priests, not queens and priestesses. Because there's a woman who is a king. I've told you, there are women who are kings. So go ahead, go and find out. It is more powerful. Ah, in accordance with his pleasure and will, it means that Nyami no pe, onu no pe na de. It is his will that you predestine us and make us clean and free like this. Eh, onu no pe. You are not the one decided it. You, he didn't call you for a meeting. He has chosen this for you, holy and blameless. Say, I'm holy and blameless. I'm holy and blameless. The, the, have you ever read the life of Moses, David, Paul, and seen their shortcomings? Oh, Moses, Nakumahan. Did God not use him? David, woman chopper. I'm telling you, like Salad and Talia, woman chopper. David, if your, your wife is beautiful, you must make sure your wife is not going around David. The king will take it. I remember when I was a kid, I said the life of David because my name is David, and I said, Lord, make me everything David is except the woman. Come when I read the thing, hey. One man, even in his old age, they went to bring him young Alangajwa. Hey! King David, and the Bible said to keep him warm. Wow! If you are a man, you can't keep a man warm, except you are a lily. My God. <laughs> Paul one day told another disciple that, you will not go with me. Yes, he sat the boy by mistake. Later on, they have made peace. He wrote something and added his name. Yes, Paul. Many things happen. Have you, you know, here when I read, he said, I'm coming to you again. You people say that I talk too much, but I'm coming. Yes. <laughs> yes. There are things that are called shortcomings. When you get close to big people God is using, you'll find shortcomings. Yeah. Can I take it? What you call shortcoming? At his funeral, they said his staff, they all, you know, the white, they are white skin, you know, they, are, they all have red. You know, this is how he greets. Let me do it, eh? This is how he greets. He likes being at your back. If he sees you and you are going, your head. That's how he expresses his love. So they say, if he loves you, that means he loves you. At his funeral. That's what they say. They say, if Papa loves you, every part. He said, the, the daughter said, when we were kids, we all had red skin. <laughs> you, you should be in the condition where you should always be facing him because if he's coming from the back, then. bang! Say, Charlie, how are you? Then he's happy. You have met a minister. You say you want his grace. The minister has been taking fufu all the time, eating big, big things. You, you have fasted for a year, two years, three years. Is it God who told you to fast? Did you consult him to hear whether it will help you? No, I'm not saying fasting is not a good place. I said one year. One year can be too much for somebody. Have we not heard of ministers who went to fast and they are dead? I even know a minister now who is fasting on mountains and valleys in places, all because he says his church is not moving the way she moves. Is it your church? Stop calling it your church. Oh. Call it his church. Say us, us, we. If he wants to see progress, he should do it. After all, Jesus himself had 12 souls at one time. 12, 12 members of 12. Even as you are you are more than the number 12. Oh. But he was a successful minister. He didn't have cathedrals. He was a successful minister. Probably with that. Do all the Bible says you do. Do all that God says you do. If you have done all there's no result, know that it is about him. He is doing his will. It's not you. After all, some are even having numbers by crook and hook. So why? Let me not say things that they will tell me they have to cut out of the audio. Hey, please. <laughs> yeah, they will come and call you. Say, Apostle, please. You said something like this. Last night, they, they had to call me and say, Apostle, please. They, there's a sermon. You said, you said, you said we want to cut this way, cut this place. Hey! Someone say, please, there's a you have there. We need to do editing. I said, this is the normal one. <laughs> that lady there. Said she has spoken to the husband. That the audios I have so far, the ones you've posted on YouTube, say, the show, they must cut some things out of it because he didn't work on it. I said, that is that one. The pure one, the correct one. <laughs> are in this place. You're a pastor, you like dancing. Look yourself in your dance. 
Are we here? God's choice is not contingent, contingent on your performance. I want that those statements on your head. He has chosen you before he even trusts you to perform. So don't be worried. Are we here? Now, let's read Romans chapter 8, verse 1, NIV. Then I'll read one last scripture and then we have closed. So let's take two more. Then there will be no part two. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, NIV. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I will not be condemned. Nobody can condemn me. Do you know what we mean by condemn? They come and say you are condemned. He said, it can never happen in your life. There is, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Are you in Christ? Jesus? Yes, sir. You cannot be. Yes, Romans chapter 8, verse 38. Some people are afraid that their salvation is not for sure. And that they may go to hell on their way. Know how they are going now. Somebody is praying, Father, help me to finish. Father, help me to finish. They are praying some dangerous prayer. The angels are like, what at all is this? What is this? Eh? They are telling the other angels, next time if they send us in this place, let's go to another place. What is this? For I am now I am convinced. Are you convinced? Some people are not convinced. Be convinced. Why should you be convinced? That neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, Neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, Nazareth. Neither height nor demon will go. Nor anything else in all creation, anything, sin, no, sin. He said, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ yes, our Lord. I want to leave you with that scripture. He said, nothing, 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 absolutely nothing. We'll take you to hell if you're in Christ Jesus. God bless you. I have a message from God to you. Hope you've been blessed by the message you just heard. Stay blessed.